any currency area needs to have a payment system where the payments will be settled in the currency. Target is the payment system of the euro system. And the six letters mean the trans European automated real time gross settlement express transfer. We obviously need a payment system within the monetary union, which is cross border, in order to ensure that one euro deposit with a central bank in one country is always changeable into a deposit with the central bank in another country. That's basically the definition of monetary union, that the monies are exchangeable freely. In a currency area, it's normal that there are cross-border payment flows and target balances only reflect those in the books of the central banks. The target balances in central bank balance sheets can be either claims or liabilities. If it's a claim, then it stands on the asset side of the central bank balance sheet um, and it is a claim towards the European Central Bank. If it is a target liability, then it is on the other side of the balance sheet. It's a liability to the European Central Bank. And the, the sum of all those positions nets uh, to zero by definition. We need to understand where target balances come from. They result from this cross-border payment flows, which are imbalanced, which reflect in the first place macroeconomic imbalances. And with the financial crisis, the questioning of the sustainability of these macroeconomic imbalances, which was then reflected in a lack of trust in the banking systems of the stressed countries. This stress increased with the sovereign debt crisis. Investors withdrew their capital invested from the so-called periphery countries. Um, in other words, they withdrew deposits, say, with a stressed uh, country bank and transferred this money to, uh, say, a bank in Germany. The target balances emerged from these cross-border payment flows and the accommodation of the ensuring liquidity needs by the euro system. With the impairment in the interbank market, if the solvent bank could not finance itself in the market, it could become illiquid very rapidly. It could become then insolvent and there would have been a collapse in the euro area economy. So it's the job of the central bank in the crisis to provide credit to the solvent banks and doing so with appropriate risk mitigation measures like requesting adequate collateral and applying haircuts to them and valuing this collateral daily in the market. There is no separate facility to create target balances. They reflect the distribution of liquidity of the euro system, which is uneven, depending on where the demand for liquidity comes from. Of course, if the banks in crisis hit countries face payment outflows, it means that those banks need more liquidity from the central bank while the banks which are recipient of the liquidity in other countries, they don't need to request additional funds from the central banks. And so their recourse to central bank liquidity is reduced. Some people have argued that the target system allows for non-due money creation, in particular in uh, stressed countries. The surplus of liquidity being deposited at the central bank shows that at the same time as there is monetary creation at the beginning of the story, there is also reabsorption of this money so that on aggregate there is no net money creation. Doubts on uh, the integrity of monetary union 
certainly accelerated um, the capital flight um, from the stressed countries into the so-called core countries and in so far also increased uh, target balances uh, further. We can see the opposite movement after July 2012 where the renewed uh, trust into the integrity of the euro created uh, opposite flows and reduced uh, target balances again. And this shows a return of confidence in the banking systems, in the integrity of the euro area, and it shows that the financial segment, uh, segmentation, this fragmentation in the interbank market has been declining. To counteract target balances or limit payment flows across uh, the euro area would be incompatible with the treaty and the principle of free movement of capital. Now, discouraging target balances would mean what? Would mean providing liquidity at conditions which depend on where the banks come to have Eurosystem liquidity. That would be contradicting the principle of equal treatment of banks in monetary policy for an integrated euro area. If you set a limit on target balances, you invite investors to think about what will happen if the limits are reached and you may invite them to withdraw their investments instead of re-channeling their investments into the stressed countries. The way to obtain a durable decline in target balances is to address them at their root causes which are themselves the root causes of the financial crisis and the sovereign debt crisis in the euro area. So what needs to be done is to improve the economic policies, the fiscal soundness, to re regain trust in the banking systems, to overcome the financial fragmentation and to strengthen the institutional setup of the economic and monetary union. This is also why Europe is engaging on a single supervision mechanism for all banks and also single resolution mechanism.